Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. A first alert weather day just on our heels for tomorrow into Saturday morning. Let's get right to it. Here's the big picture right now on satellite and radar as it's taking shape out to the west, exiting Montana, moving into western North Dakota. That rain starting to make the change over to some snow in some spots. Now that temperatures for the night are starting to dip. Looking right ahead to your first alert forecast. Overall, the first thing that we're going to see over the next couple of hours is some breezy winds out of the south and east. That says the system that's out to the west will continue to change over to snow. Overall, we're quiet tonight into tomorrow morning for most of the Red River Valley. One thing we'll see is some light drizzle, some light freezing drizzle potential. It's something that's a little bit hard to be detected by radar just because the droplets are so small. So you're going to want to make sure to tune in tomorrow morning to the Valley today with meteorologist Lisa Green. She'll break down uh, what you need to know as you're headed out for tomorrow morning. A little bit of light snow starts to move into the Devil's Lake Basin through the morning and into the early afternoon. But as we talked about yesterday, there's a lot of dry air that we have to overcome first, so it's going to be slow to move in. Not expecting snow in most areas until midday. Here we are now 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Light snow moving into the Southern Valley and parts of Lakes Country. Snow continues across the Northern Valley and out to the West as well. But look at these winds really ramping up as this snow gets on the move, starting to move to the east. The winds pick up out of the north and east, gusting 30 to 40 miles per hour. The strongest winds come overnight Friday and into Saturday on the heels of the snowfall. We could see gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour in some spots, and it remains gusty through our Saturday morning. Here's an update to that snowfall potential. Snow is most likely to begin accumulating late tomorrow night into Saturday morning once temperatures are a little bit colder. Two to four inches possible across the Northern Valley and into parts of the James River Valley. Isolated higher amounts can't be entirely ruled out. However, we have pretty warm temperatures, so initially we're going to see a lot of melting. Here in Fargo, I expect around an inch or so of snowfall. The winds for tomorrow gusting 30 plus miles per hour out of the west northwest initially transitioning to more of a north northwesterly direction by Saturday morning and Saturday morning seeing the strongest gusts. Again, some locations could see upwards of 50 miles per hour. As for the impacts, there's going to be impacts just with the falling snow itself, creating reductions in visibility, combining with the gusty winds leading to blowing and drifting snow, further reductions in visibility and one thing we haven't seen a whole lot of in most locations this year, icy and snowy roads. Looking at our temperatures right now, still at 49 here in Fargo. Those winds have been gusty this evening, 44 in Grand Forks. Most areas are in the 30s and 40s now, but we're going to be colder for tomorrow. Temperatures in the 30s and low 40s, coldest for the weekend. Another chilly day Monday and Tuesday, but then we start to warm up. So hopefully, Courtney, any snow that we do see, it's not going to stick around yeah. too long. I know a lot of folks on social media, they're bouncing back between do we want a white Christmas or not, which is an inch of snow on the ground on Christmas Day. We should make a poll about that. I should. I'm very curious. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Thanks, Summer. Remember that bright flash and loud boom caught on camera and heard across the community in Bemidji? Officials are still looking for an explanation about that. It's been a month since we first told you about the explosion. Many thought it was a meteor. Since then, NASA confirmed that was likely not the case. We did reach out to Bemidji officials again, and they tell us they've reviewed additional security footage, but there hasn't been any additional discovery as to what may have caused it. Students in Jamestown performed in the Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade today. We'll give you a sneak peek next.